So it's Saturday, and as I promised on Saturdays, I would give you some spiritual review or um, musings at least. Um, and I thought that as a first video, it might make sense for me to explain to you while I'm, why I'm interested in uh, spiritual matters at all. It starts off with Christianity. Um, uh, it uh, goes on to be many other uh, traditions, um, but, uh, but it does start off with Christianity. In fact, it doesn't start off with Christianity, it starts off with atheism. I grew up in France, and in France it's actually illegal to talk about religions in school. Since the uh, revolution, uh, there was a separation between the church and the state, and one of the things that the, uh, the French revolutionaries uh, asked for was for the church to have nothing to do with uh, state affairs that includes schools. So, so um, in uh, schools in France, I didn't even, I mean, I, I had absolutely no idea about, uh, about anything to do with what Christianity really was. The only real um, exposure that I had to Christianity was whatever I saw in the media. Um, and you have a good idea of what, uh, 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 at the time I was 19 years old, you got a good idea of what um, little I would have been exposed to. Um, uh, I moved to the UK when I was, um, when I was uh, 18, um, so it was only a year or two after that that, uh, that I actually um, had a religious experience and I wanted to talk to you about that. So um, I, was, uh, I was studying, I was studying, of all things, hospitality management, because why not? Um, anyway, uh, I was studying this in a very, very tiny town in, on the south coast of England. Uh, it was not a nice place. Uh, but I was very, very lucky in that uh, in my first and third year of studies, I got to go to the United States uh, on placement. And uh, uh, the first year was fantastic. Uh, it was six months uh, just next to a train station. I could just hop onto a train and 15 minutes later I'd be in Manhattan. Had a blast. The second time I was in New York, uh, I wasn't uh, so close to a train station. I was in a place called White Plains. I had to take a bus to a train and then a train uh, uh, to another train and then to uh, then to Manhattan. Anyway, it took the best part of half a day for me to get into Manhattan this second time round. And, um, and I just didn't have the time or the money to actually get myself into Manhattan. So I was actually very, very bored that second time uh, that I was in America. So, um, what happened is that because I was so bored, I decided to do something constructive with my time. It just so happened that that constructive thing that I decided to do was to um, uh, give a solid basis to my belief that there couldn't be a god. Um, I had decided that uh, the, the concept of, of a god was ridiculous and uh, I decided that I couldn't go on uh, claiming to be an atheist if I didn't know what I was talking about and the best way for me to know what I was talking about was to get directly to the source text. The source text was the Holy Bible I had to get my hands on one. I bought one uh, for a dollar um, circumstances. Anyway, I, I've lost that Bible since. I've bought a couple since. Um, but um, I read the whole thing cover to cover and what I realized was that these were the, the, wor these were the words of people who had had a strange experience and who had then struggled to put human words onto those experiences. That's what came across. And, and I was fascinated. I was absolutely fascinated. I, I, 
uh, it was just so weird. Uh, I remember reading uh, Exodus and, and thinking to myself, this is just so bizarre. It's so completely, um, it's, got, it's clearly got so little to do with reality and so much to do with 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 something that I, I've never been in touch with. I mean, I, I just could not couldn't couldn't relate to it in, in, in any way and it fascinated me. So uh, so I, I read my way through the through the Old Testament and then I got to the New Testament where I was introduced to uh, the figure of uh, of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, and of course, I had had exposure to this figure of Jesus, you know, uh, um, uh, a popular culture doesn't let you get away with without knowing a little bit about uh, about Jesus. And and but it was so the, the figure that I was introduced to in in the uh, in the four Gospels was so completely different from the from the image that I had in my head um, that I'd formed of, uh, of, of him. Uh, and, and what I was reading about was a, essentially a revolutionary who uh, had been killed for uh, speaking out against organised religion. <laughs> it was not at all what I was expecting. Uh, and so, uh, and so I, 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 read, I read this very, very carefully and um, and and I, I really liked the things that he was saying. Like for example, I really liked the way he says, um, uh, "When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who like to stand in the in the houses of worship or in the synagogues uh, uh, to be seen by many people. Um, uh, believe me when I say that they have had their reward in full, as in they'll be seen by many people. Um, uh, but when you pray, go to your room, lock the door, and pray to your." Heavenly Father, uh, 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 and then your uh, uh, and then your Holy Father or whatever it is uh, uh, who um, uh, sees what you have done in secret will give you your reward. Uh, so, so I, I really like that as well. You know this this idea of uh, uh, you know praying in front of other people, just not being the right thing, you know, yeah, click, click, go to your room, close the door. It makes so much more sense if you're going to have a, um, a, uh, essentially a conversation with a spiritual being, with a, with a, a, a non-physical being, it makes sense not to have a load of other people around you judging you while you're doing this. I mean, uh, you'd want a safe space, you alone with this spiritual entity, right? So, so I, 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 I was changing my mind <laughs> about uh, about my my pre uh, my preconceptions about what uh, what Christianity was, um, and uh, and then I read this um, where was it uh, Matthew seven seven ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And, and that, that spoke to me. I, I, I wanted to have that. I wanted to have that, um, that communication with this um, non-physical entity uh, that, that, that had been talked about throughout the Old Testament and that now in the I was reading Jesus talking about in the New Testament uh, and so um, and so I followed his advice I went to my uh, my dorm room and I locked the door and I um, well for the I, I tried praying many times in the past of course you know uh, things like God if you if you really exist um, you know, give, give, get me a console <laughs> and then I'll know that for sure that you exist or <laughs> whatever it was. But for the first time this time, I was actually, um, I was praying as if God existed 
rather than praying to see if God existed, if that makes sense. Uh, and, uh, and of course, having read what I just read, the right thing to do was, the only thing to do, in fact, was to acknowledge my failings uh, because, because what else could I possibly do? Uh, um, uh, if, if, um, if, you're, if you're actually speaking to God and not to your, um, to your hopes of what God might be or to you, your, um, how can I put it? If you're, um, yeah, so if you're actually speaking to God, then the, the only thing that you can do in front of perfection is say, sorry, I didn't speak to you first, or sorry, I didn't speak to you earlier, um, and also sorry for not believing in you earlier, right? Uh, <laughs> um, so what I, I think what I'm trying to get across is that I wasn't uh, speaking to my, uh, my angers about what I thought God was, but rather I was speaking to perfection. And when you're speaking to perfection, uh, the, the, the only possible thing to do is to realize your own imperfection. And the more I admitted my imperfection, the more relaxed I became and um, and the more I became aware that I was absolutely forgiven. <laughs> um, I've had a chance to think about this obviously since it happened and I would put it in the same category of experiences as imagination. However, have you ever had a dream that um, felt m like more than a dream? Have you ever had a dream that felt significant? And when you woke up, you thought to yourself, that didn't feel like my usual dreams. That felt like it was given to me. It felt like I'm supposed to learn something from that. Well, the difference between that kind of dream and your regular dream where you're, I don't know, trying to find a ticket to get on the train, but all the ticket machines are <laughs> broken or whatever, you know, your regular dreams, at least my regular dreams. Um, so there is a difference between those, kind, those two kinds of dreams, right? Well, the conversation that I had with God that day, alone in my room with a locked door, is, uh, well, you, you could argue that it also happened in my imagination, but there is the same difference between that experience and my usual imagination as there is between your meaningful dreams and your regular dreams. So in other words, I know that it felt different to me than my usual imagination flights. But could I prove it? No, of course not. And I wouldn't... I'd say I wouldn't want to prove it. Yeah, I'd love to prove it. But it's not provable. It's not provable. And, and uh, it, it couldn't possibly be provable. Um, and... Um, and and then it's down to the individual, it's down to me to decide that was, that was real or that was not real. Now something much, much more impressive happened to me uh, about, about a year later. Much more impressive uh, and quite freaky in fact. And I'd love to tell you about it. And um, I think um, next Saturday is probably going to be the right time to do that. I think I've spoken enough for today. So if you're if you're interested in finding out what this uh, amazing story uh, that happened to me 
um, is the thing that really turned me and um, and that uh, that led me to become a teacher of religious studies uh, for for so long. Um, yeah, tune in next Saturday and I'll let you know. Okay, <laughs> take care. See you soon.